I briefly introduced the Dwarf 3 as my very first smart telescope in my previous video and I talked about how I think smart telescopes are making astrophotography so much easier because they're so easy to use and I got right into it with a solar imaging session that doubled as a tutorial but I didn't talk about the features and specifications in depth. So we're gonna talk about that today, along with my experience doing my first astrophotography session with it, and my first lunar imaging session since the lunar eclipse of March 2025, which I didn't get to image because we had a dust storm roll in just as totality was occurring. Other than that, let's get right into it. The Dwarf 3 has a dual imaging system with a 35mm telephoto lens and a 3.4mm wide angle lens. The telephoto lens has 150mm focal length, while the wide angle lens comes in at 6.7mm. On a standard 35mm camera sensor, this equates to 737mm focal length on the telephoto lens and 45mm on the wide angle. The Dwarf 3 uses the Sony IMX678 camera sensor and has built-in filters, including a VIS filter for general use, an astro filter, and a dual band filter for emission nebulae that blocks a majority of light pollution and moonlight. It features a 10,000 mAh battery with USB charging and 128GB of VMMC memory. Both camera configurations support various shooting modes, including photo, video, astro, burst, panorama, and time-lapse. The telephoto camera offers 4K video at 30 frames per second or 1080p at 60 frames per second, while the wide-angle camera offers 1080p at 30 frames per second. The maximum exposure time in EQ and Astro mode is 30 seconds, but without EQ mode, I recommend not exceeding 15 seconds to avoid field rotation. Other features include NFC one-touch connectivity, Astro mosaics, and wide-field astrophotography for shooting the Milky Way, for example. The Dwarf 3 is compact, measuring 222 by 142 by 65 cubic millimeters and weighing just 1.3 kilograms. Now that we've talked about specifications, let's wait for nightfall so we can do our lunar imaging session. All right, so I have the Dwarf 3 set up in my backyard now. It's about 20 feet behind me. And I'm very pleased that it was still able to connect to my phone because I got obstacles here. And I thought the distance was gonna be shorter, but I'm surprised that it can reach this far. So I have the app open now. I'm gonna tap on photo and I'm gonna change the control layout. I'm gonna tap on that icon on the bottom left hand corner under the question mark to change the layout. It's personal preference, I like this one better. So. I'm going to use the wide angle camera to try to find the moon and it should pop up on my telephoto camera and there it is. So I'm going to minimize the wide angle camera and I'm going to try to center the moon as best I can. There we go. That looks good. So from here, I will tap on function. Then I'm going to scroll to the right and select moon track. And the two steps that I'm being asked to do here, I've already done. So I'm just going to tap on done already. And the dwarf is going to attempt to center the moon again a little more accurately to start tracking. If this is the first time you're doing this, the moon may be overexposed. And if that's the case, you can tap on the screen, actually double tap. And it should bring the moon down to a correct exposure and focus and that looks good right there now from here by default i'm tapping on the burst icon but by default it's usually set to photo now my goal is to get a stacked image of the moon because stacked images will bring out more detail i could do a burst and get those images exported into my Mac and do the stacking manually or I can use Astro mode and I can do it in real time on the app. So I am now in Astro mode. I'm going to tap on function then parameter and the filter has to be the VIS filter. It should be set to that by default. And for me, the shutter speed by default was set to 1 250th of a second, but I want to go a little faster 
at one five hundredth of a second to get a little more contrast on the moon. So one five hundredth of a second, the gain I'm gonna leave at two and the count, I'm gonna do 20. 20 is more than enough. So I'm gonna scroll all the way to the left as close as I can to 20, it's at 19. So I'm gonna tap the plus icon to get it to 20. And I'm gonna tap on function and I'm gonna tap on the red shutter icon and we're gonna get started. And what's cool about this is it's gonna show you the stacking live on your screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Then once it's finished, I will show the result in the app, but I'm also gonna export the images to my Mac and show you the final result. So let's go ahead and start the live stack. All right, it is done and I accidentally closed the view and went back to the home screen, but the photo should be in the album. So I'm gonna tap on the album icon and there it is. This is a 20 stacked image of the lunar surface and it looks pretty good. It's nice and sharp, there's some good detail there. And this is ideal if you wanna do something quick and you wanna share it on social media right away or with your friends. But if you want to go a little further and you have some experience with post-processing, I like to export the 20 individual frames into my Mac and do some post-processing and stacking with Affinity Photo. So this is the final result straight from the Dwarf 3 and here is the final result with stacking using Affinity Photo on my Mac. All right, now comes the fun part for me, which is deep sky astrophotography, and I wanna go for a galaxy tonight. I would like to image M51. So we're gonna start from the beginning. I have the app open on the home screen, but instead of tapping on photo, I'm gonna tap on Atlas, and I'm gonna tap the search icon. I'm gonna go to favorites, because I already have it as a favorite, and I'm gonna tap the camera icon next to the little heart, so the dwarf can find M51. Now it's asking me to point the lens to a cloudless sky with dense stars, which I've already done. So I'm gonna tap okay. From here, the dwarf three is gonna calibrate. So what it's doing right now is it's pointing at different areas of the sky to figure out where it is. And then from there, it's gonna go to the target. All right, so it took less than a minute to do that which is pretty fast in my opinion. And the dwarf has found M51, so now it's tracking it. So what I wanna do at this point is I wanna tap on the burst icon and I wanna go to astro mode. From here, I'm gonna tap function, parameter, and I wanna make sure that the astro filter is what's being used. And I wanna put this to the test because the moon is out right now and I wanna see how well this does in bright moonlight. So astro filter will be the filter of choice. The shutter speed for some reason is set to half a second by default, but we wanna go up to 15 seconds. Now, if you're not using the Dwarf 3 in EQ mode, 15 seconds is the max you can go because if you go any more than that, you're gonna introduce field rotation and you don't want that. So 15 seconds it is. I'll leave the gain at 120. And the count, I wanna shoot about half an hour. So that's gonna be about 120 frames. And there it is, 120. I'm gonna tap function and again, the really cool thing about this is that it'll live stack. So as the exposures are being taken, it'll stack in real time and it'll show you slowly what it's gonna look like. So the galaxy will slowly appear on the screen as the session goes on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. It's gonna take a while, so I'm gonna stop the video here and fast forward to the end result. So it's been about 35 minutes since the session started 
during that time, I went and hopped in the shower to start winding down for the night. So that's why I'm dressed different. But here's the final result. This is what I came back to. And this is very impressive for a smart telescope. This is a 30 minute exposure of M51 and the Dwarf 3 does automatically apply noise reduction at the end of each session. It takes about three minutes and it looks good. Now, it's worth noting that there are some gradients. So you'll see some on the upper right side of the frame and more on the lower left side of the frame. And it's important to consider that we are getting close to a full moon as of this recording. So for being this close to the full moon, a 30 minute exposure on a galaxy, in my opinion, this is really good. My final thoughts on a Dwarf 3 and smart telescopes in general is that I think a device like this one is an excellent gateway for beginners because it takes a lot of the initial guesswork out when you're first starting out. You don't have to learn to polar align yet. You don't have to learn to post process yet. You will have to learn these things eventually if you're gonna move on in this hobby. But initially, just to get your feet wet, this is an excellent device to get started. So once you start advancing in the hobby, instead of having the app do the stacking and the processing for you, you can export the individual sub exposures into a computer so you can start learning to process them on your own. Overall, I think this is a great investment and the price point makes it very accessible for a lot more people because astrophotography is a very expensive hobby and the cost is what keeps a lot of people away. And that concludes this video. I really had a good time with this telescope. I look forward to using it for myself and with my family for a long time. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider following me or subscribing to my channel. Until then, take care of yourselves and I wish for you clear skies.